thing that's happening with Trey White, you want to sign him now because you, he's seen, he's proven. Great player. Josh Allen, not really the same thing. Right. Not really proven. However, There's a very big part of me that says it doesn't get much better than this. We've seen bad quarterbacks before, yes. right? So the question becomes, is your faith in Allen or is your faith in the system, right? Does Allen have the talent, the mental capacity, and the ability to be an effective quarterback for your team? If the answer to that is yes, then you sign him. We've seen bad quarterbacks before. Early, though. You sign him early? I think in today's NFL, teams have a tendency to ride out rookie deals to a point where it damages them. It does. Right? So uh, Tannehill is a perfect example. Right? Miami rode out Tannehill's contract to the last possible moment. Mind you, right, with Tannehill, they signed him to a big, a, a decent-sized contract extension, and then what ended up happening? They yeah, had to cut it. Then, yeah, they had to cut him. The question is, do you want to buy out two affordable years of Josh Allen? Because that's what you'd be doing. You'd be buying okay. out. The affordable so he year. Had, he had 2018, well, actually, 2019. It actually, what what position was, he was drafted seventh. seventh. Oh, so it's one more year of affordable football. Because remember, that fifth year fifth option, year option is going to be massive. Yeah, He's yeah. going to make a ton of money in that yeah. fifth year option. As we talked about many times on the drive, if you're drafted in the top 10, the average of your fifth year option is top 10. Right. If it's, uh, if you're drafted anywhere between 11 and 32, you're, fifth year option is the average of the three to the 25th player at, at your position. position that being considered okay he's played his 2018 season he just played his 2019 season right. you're saying at the end of 2020 you sign him before the collective bargaining agreement goes into place because you don't know what that, that agreement is going to say right yeah you don't know what it's going to do the salary cap you don't know what it's going to do to player guarantees That's so you don't know what's going to happen so it's a risk but the fact is the nfl continues to make more and more money they do and the players and rightfully so want a portion of that money in their salary so as the nfl continues to generate more and more revenue the players are going to get paid more and more now it's up to debate where that revenue comes from totally understand that point right but the fact still remains you get to josh allen as soon as you can if you feel like he is going to be on your team for longer than two years and because remember you can't start talking negotiations with him until january 1st of 2020 which One. will slide 2021 yes excuse me you can't talk extension with him until january 20 january 1st of 2021 which slides in right before the end of the season, right? And right before the collective bargaining agreement expires and a new one has to go into place. So you're taking out all your funky variables, you're locking down your quarterback, you're buying out his one year of affordable rookie contract, which he makes like $4 million, it's not that much. You're buying out his fifth year option, which he's gonna make it's like a lot. $20 million. So it balances out, it does. essentially. Right, you lock up your quarterback. If you, if if the playoff game didn't scare you to a point where you think oh, that that's not, yeah. let's be real about that, dude. There were a lot of scary things. Don't get me started. The whole a pitch, lot of scary things. The pitch was the thing that got me. You have ball security issues. What are you doing? Just trying to be a hero? You know what I thought so fascinating was when they went to Allen. He was just sitting by himself on the on the bench. That's what I don't get. Yeah. Why isn't he on the phone on the tablet that's what doing I mean. some stuff? Yeah. Why? Helmet, helmet off, sitting on the bench by himself. Now, I'm sure that's not the way that it was the whole time. No. But the but... shots that they went to, you weren't seeing Dorsey come over and grab him right as soon as he came off the field. Right? He walked by McDermott, sat down on the bench. And I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna question his work ethic. I'm not gonna question him as a player. Yeah, and I, maybe I was and, a little bit over well, the line. Well, and a bit, I think, but... well, I'm not saying you're over the line, but I think there's a point where we all, as athletes, do something, and we go, and we sit, and we sit back for a second and go, "Why in God's name did I just do that? Yeah. What was I thinking?" And that probably was that moment for Aaron, right? Like that was, that was, I don't know why in the world I did that. Probably every single time I've ever released a football out of my hands, I've asked that question. <laughs> what am I doing? You know, every, I'm chasing this guy the other way. You know, every time I hit a batter in the head with a pitch, <laughs> uh, they were all fine, by the way. Um, oh my god! I knew exactly what I was doing. I thought you were joking. <laughs> um, For sake of time, can you make a left and yes. go up? Um, Ha <laughs> ha
can you buy out Allen? You can. Do you want to right sense. now? I think the answer to that is we'll see. Financially, it makes sense. Financially, it does make sense. Uh, the answer is we'll see because that playoff game was scary. It is. It is. But he has a lot of things naturally mm-hmm. with his athleticism, his size, his arm strength. That is very in the right system. Shermer, Todd Haley, Jim Bob Cooter. Now we're talking. Shermer, now we're talking. I mean, you get Shermer, Shermer with Shermer him, runs kid. a system that would be tailor made for the skill sets on this offense. You got oh. you got wide receivers who are good but not elite level talent, right? You've got running backs who were interchange. You mean Shermer running backs were interchangeable, but yeah, were. you put a talent like you know you put Singletary, a talent like Singletary back there. So many different things with him, right? Now, Shermer would be a good one. Oh, Pat Shermer, Shermer would be good. I like Todd Haley. For I mean, a lot of people don't. I know. I like Todd Haley. Well, you like Todd Haley because you're still running the EJ Manuel was drafted because he was Ben Roethlisberger 2.0. That's that's no connection whatsoever. That's a hundred percent the connection. That's zero. I did say that. You did say that. <laughs> but that's not the connection I'm making here. You're saying there's not a connection between the tan- the intangibles of Josh Allen versus EJ Manuel, like before we knew the player EJ Manuel was. What? No way. You're saying there's not a little bit that's the same. You want to go just purely on arm strength? Oh, no. I mean, Allen has purely a better arm than Manuel. I mean, that's not a question. But what I'm saying is, like, size. Manuel had, like, a four on the Wonderlick. <laughs> yeah, he went to Florida State. You need a heartbeat to go in there. Maybe. I think Jameis Winston let us know all. 30 for 30. <laughs> that's it. 30 for 30. 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. How do you do that? I don't just. How do you just, do that? You're just good enough at football to be really bad at it. <laughs> That's all you gotta be. You gotta be good enough at football to be really bad at it. I do believe that the intangibles of Josh. But here's the thing: we're talking about this now. But let's not forget. Straight. Let's not forget. You get at this point. You get a full season with Josh Allen again to determine whether you want to sign him to that extension or not. Because you can't start negotiating till January. But your deadline's really short because the season's gonna wrap up in March. That's when the CBA is going to die, so you got to get all that stuff done. And that's the thing that I don't think anybody's talking about. Yes, free agency this year, fine. Free agency next year? It might not be free agency next year. No. So if you're talking about guys like, you know, like exclusive rights free agents, just as an example, right? Like Robert Foster, Jason Kroom, those uh, Levi Wallace, they're exclusive rights free agents this year. Next year, they're going to be restricted free agents, right? Guess what? There might not be. Free agency. Free agency. Yeah. Right. So you put you have guys that are restricted free agents. You might be able to you're gonna be able to retain them because free agency is gonna be a bloodbath. Look this offseason for two year deals. That's the de- you look for this offseason for two year deals. I still think rookie deals it's just me. Rookie deals should be increased substantially. And they don't count against the cap. But here's the here's the other th- risk you Here's the other risk you run, Paul, with Allen. If he plays phenomenally next year, then his contract even goes up. If, or, or I mean, if he plays phenomenally in 2020, all right, uh, you're gonna have to pay him anyway. Yeah. So you have your quarterback. It's like, but if he doesn't play well, if he plays, eh, you can get him cheaper than any other quarterback would. Right. So, but then if he plays play- poorly, it's a business decision. If he plays well, then you found your guy. Right. So, which sword do you want to be on? Which right. side of the sword? Well, the, you have a defensive minded head coach, so whoever comes in will be very comfortable in what happens. Right. Right. And I think that's where kind of we sit, right? So, if Allen plays fine in 2020, mm-hmm. you still have a fifth year option on him, right? Which you'll likely take and pay him the big bucks for the year, right? But what you're going to end up doing is you're going to look for another quarterback then. That's what you should be doing. And GM and head coach. Well, there and therein lies the rub, right? The rub. As as Allen goes, the truth of the matter is, Bean and McDermott have their wagons hitched to Allen. If they sign him to a contract extension, then their fates are sealed with whatever happens to Allen. If Allen goes down in a in a flaming ball of fire, then coordinators are going to start getting fired left and right. Well, yeah, the thing the, here's the deal. To it out. That's not exclusive to Buffalo, though. That no, happens all over. That's the everywhere. That's everywhere. Uh, but name me a head coach for the Bills that brought in their own quarterback, and then when it didn't go well, they got to keep their job still. 
I can't name one. They don't exist. No. No. Do I think they should buy out Allen right now? I do. The reason is you're going to hope. You're going to hope you find a quarterback late in the draft. No thanks. I'm not signing back up for that. We did that too much. I'm not signing back up for that. I want to go find a value quarter? No. I disagree with you. Respectfully. I don't want, I really? I respectfully disagree. Why? I got to hear this. I, no, no, no. About, not about the... I don't want to draft a quarterback late, ever. Okay. All right. I'm talking about the, the Allen part. Okay. I've seen too many things on tape that... There's a reason I took my foot off the gas with Brian Dable this year. Yeah. There's a lot of things the kid's missing. Mm-hmm. And it could be... You can make as many excuses for him as you did for Dable last year. Boy, we're about to fight. We are about to fight. 